So last month I put out a video um, showing off this new technique that I've been working on called the clack shot. Licked up that clacking rig. So I know there's people out there trying to figure out how it works and I'm sure some people have figured it out. Uh, I did put a you know clear picture of it in the last video but uh, since then I've had a million questions on how to set it up and and this and that and, and that could be expected. Um, I didn't really offer a whole lot of explanation on on how the rig uh, was set up so I've been getting cyber bullied like crazy. Um, so I figured I better just show you how this thing works and, and how to set it up. I mean, in ice fishing, especially, uh, innovations are few and far between. Um, there's really only vertical presentations. So, you know, pretty much you have a spoon, a jig, or a split shot rig, or some sort of like jig and wrap. So what this technique allows is to extract the best components of all those rigs and have it in one compact unit. Um, so it has the weight of a jigging wrap and the ability to get down there really fast. It has the attracting qualities of a buckshot and it has the natural component like a split shot live bait rig would. So I mean it's kind of a no-brainer and it seems simple now to put it together, but um, I just started playing with it earlier this year and it hasn't left my rod locker and I've been using it every day. Before we go any further, just uh, slide on down, honk on the subscribe button, uh, you know, help me build my rep a little. There's kids out there riding tricycles to farm ponds that are just dummying me in this YouTube game. I'm a bit of a dinosaur, but I've got some good info to put out, so. Essentially what it is, and I'll show you here, it's a cylinder drop shot weight ranging from a quarter ounce to like five eighths ounce. Paint them with a super glow. Um, and then I have this rattle band that's from like a, an old school style flipping jig. That's the, I mean, that's the basis of the clack shot. So what happens is these rattles just go wild. They bang against the weight. Uh, they just raise a lot of hell and, and they're able to call fish in from a distance, which is always a good thing. Um, well, attracting fish is only half the battle. Um, the other half is getting them to bite. Uh, while a fish may want to come into something like this, they're not going to necessarily want to eat something that looks like that. So this is where the drop shot comes in. You're going to have your hook above your weight, uh, usually 12 to 18 inches, but can vary depending on the clarity. Um, and I usually just put a live minnow on there. You can put a plastic on there if, if you have fish that are a little more apt to bite or, or whatever, or you have them fired up. Um, so what happens is this weight just raises all kinds of hell and the fish tracks that weight along the bottom. And as they get closer, they'll see that supernatural live minnow um, up above all the commotion and it's just a no brainer decision. Um, so you can just slow down your clack. You don't have to keep it rocking. You've already, that part has done its job. The fish is already there. Um, and now it can just focus on that super subtle presentation, really natural, eat it, have no resistance, you know, give that fish time to take it in and then you catch them. It's a really great technique for large expansive pieces of mud, like on the Southern basin of Lake of the Woods or I would imagine it works well on Lake Winnipeg. It will work on rock too. Um, in some situations where the fish are flying a little bit higher and, and wanting to chase bait, there probably are better applications, but uh, as far as just calling them in on, on relatively flat areas where they're bottom oriented, uh, this seems to be the way to do it. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna show you how I tie it and it's just the same as tying a drop shot rig. I don't know how, how well you'll be able to see this. Uh, I'm sure you can cruise around on the, on the internet and find a better video than this for tying a drop shot, but we'll see if this works here. So I always start with a swivel. I'm just gonna tie my, my main line onto this. I use 10 pound um, fluorocarbon. This is Sniper, works good. Um, 
obviously if you have a little bit more line shy fish or in clearer water then you can uh, tone it down a little but this is what I've got let out a little length okay I tie a kind of a unique knot when it comes to uh, tying a drop shot so if you can follow along great if not just just google a palomar knot and and that works well too so I go through the top of the hook double that line back through and then I just pull a length here okay so I've got a length maybe 18 inches or so there then I put that loop over my finger like that and I wrap it three times over itself tuck that back through the hole and then here's a good trick especially when dealing with this kind of small hook um, just pull it with the handle of the pliers and you'll have on this particular knot you'll have three tag ends one is going to go back through the eye and down to the weight and these other two you just trim off so to ensure your hook stands upright like I said I'll take this tag end and just tuck it back through Okay, so I have a hook standing on end. I usually like a one knot drop shot or octopus style hook. And then on these drop shot weights I've been making, um, they just have a little line clip on them. You can tie it if you want, if you're concerned about losing it. But the thing I like about this little line clip, so there you have my rig, say that's 18 inches. Uh, if I find the fish aren't wanting to come up too tall to that, uh, I can just make a real quick adjustment just pull the line out and then clip it on now I'm up here um, you know only a foot away so like I said if you're worried about losing your uh, your rig um, just tie it on there that's fine too so that's it it's pretty simple it's just a really loud drop shot um, but it does work uh, one thing people have been asking lots is, well, why can't you just tie a buckshot on there? Um, and I mean, you could, if you want to spend seven or eight bucks on a buckshot, uh, just to use as a sinker, then that's fine. But one big difference you'll see, or here, I should say, um, listen to a buckshot, hold it up against your ear. It's not, you know. There's a little bit of life in there. I don't know if you can hear that. And then here's this rig. So there's an obvious difference there. Uh, don't be making fun of my hand hand motions either. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes, not to be cyber bullied further. Um, so anyway, that's why. Uh, I like that super loud clack. It's not just a walleye thing either. I mean, it works really well on crappie and really well on jumbo perch. Um, I'm sure there's a few other applications for it. Like once the burbots start snapping, I'm going to be using a big super size one of these to, to catch a few of those. Uh, lake trout in areas where they're focused on the mud eating perch and, and you know, other things down there, it'll work. But I definitely wouldn't drop it off a 60 foot ledge and, you know, try to drop shot a lake trout. It's just not going to work out well. Uh, but in a lot of other scenarios, it, it has its place. Um, so I explained it in the, in the first video I released. Um, having a, a soft parabolic rod is really key for this. Um, it's largely a visual bite, uh, and a lot of times it's really subtle. So you'll see the fish come in on your graph, and your rod will just go like that. And you have all the time in the world to let it load up. There's very little resistance. And, uh, you know, you let it eat it for, for whatever, five to 10 seconds or less or more and, uh, just sweep into them and reel them in. Uh, it's super simple. Um, if you don't feel like you have the things to make it yourself, uh, you know, these rattles can be pretty hard to find and, and painting drop shot weights is a pain. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to learn how to tie the drop shot and all that, um, I've, I've tied it all myself, put all the components together. Uh, and I'm just going to sell them like that. That way you just grab them off the shelf, tie them on and you're good to go. Um, we're going to have a limited run at sports headquarters here. 
I don't know if they'll make it to online. Uh, it's, it's really hard to get the components right now. So eventually they're going to be widely available. Um, so it, it's here to stay and you're going to see just how effective it can be. Uh, and I hope it works for everyone as well as it has for me.